Let us look at uh, Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect. Who, who would read it for us? I will. Okay. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. <laughs> its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honey honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant from presumptuous sins, let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Okay, let us look at this psalm one more time. Just look over this and uh, meditate and I would like... Uh, to hear from you which verse or verses uh, resonate with you. I think the first verse is you know, this is part of creation. I think it's, just, it's the all of God's creation. I mean, it always strikes me if I just slow down and take the time, right, to look at it. It's very interesting. I remember a pastor uh, many years ago. I listened to a pastor preaching, and he uh, was into uh, stars, and he knew all the stars, and he was he had an app that would show him, you know, how all these, you know, constellations and everything. So, and he says uh, the reason he likes it uh, because of this verse. He 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 is watching. Uh, he, he is watching all these stars and, you know, and every time he, um, it somehow connects him to the Lord. He, whenever he studies these stars, uh, 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 he, uh, he, he realizes how, how, how great our Lord is and that brings him closer to God. So, so that is why he has nothing to do. He is a former athlete who became a pastor. But then he learned more about stars and had this app and actually is, you know, watching them <laughs> on a regular basis just because of this, of this verse. So this is what you said, uh, Kirk, as well, right? You are watching God's We have this. We have an app like that. You have an app like that? I was so watching them last night. The, you can point at a certain <laughs> area and it'll show you the star, the name of the star. That's or funny. is it really a, a planet? Ah, is it, is, it, is it, you need to pay for that? No. It's free? What's the name of the app? Skyline. Skyline? That's what I was doing. We were doing that last night. It's so funny, because as soon as a star will come out and it's bright, uh -huh. I'm intrigued by it. And I just pull this, you can even look below. Yeah, you can point it down and it'll show you. It'll this, show you where everything is. Where the stars are at. It's, just, or, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. we were, it's, yeah. Last night was an observing of the sky for us. <laughs> So then, would you agree that the heavens declare the glory of God? Yes. Funny, I, I was looking at the sun yesterday through a telescope, mm -hmm. through a special filter. So you can actually look at the whole sun and you can see there's a 
relatively large sunspots. Sunspots are small, but I'm looking at it. I think, well, that's 93 million miles away. The light I'm looking at, the image, is actually nine and a half minutes old, because that's the speed of light to get here. If there's an explosion with that sunspot, the solar wind will be traveling at, is it like two million miles an hour? So it takes quite a long time to get here, um, uh, but it will. And that sunspot is, is bigger than the planet Earth, that little dot. Um, and just looking at it, it felt like I was the only person in the universe that actually was looking at the sun. That was kind of stupid, but, <laughs> you know, uh, but it, it's probably feeding my narcissism, I don't know, but, but it just felt like, wow, the statistics are hard to get one's mind around. Um, I always like to drive my cars to the moon, which is once at uh, 246,000 miles. So you, once you've got 246,000 miles, it's time to change it. Uh, and all these statistics are playful, but actually quite awe-inspiring. Uh, I also watched recently, and I'll say this and then I'll shut up for a bit. I, I watched um, Apollo 9, which was James Lovell went round the sun, you know, and, and pre preparing for the moonshot. And on his way, they were recording and this documentary had his commentary and they're looking at the earth and, and he's halfway to the moon looking at the earth and we're expecting something profound from him and he says the utmost stupid thing I could ever think of. He, uh, he says, it's obvious that, you know, there has to be hundreds and hundreds of more civilizations and people and the arrogance of man to think that we think we are special. And I'm thinking, what? You know, and then I realize, of course, it depends on what your template or your paradigm is for belief. Well, if he's evolution, if he believes that if you stand around long, if you wait long enough, uh, Boeing 747 or 707 will come into being, then that's the concept of your belief. I don't have the faith for that, right? I believe there has to be a mind, there has to be creation, there has to be work to put something, to build this building. I mean, it's painfully obvious, but if your paradigm is evolution and everything came out of nothing to be something and orderly, that takes a monstrous amount of faith. And I was so irritated with him because I was expecting something really great. And he let me down. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. <clears throat> you know, uh, when they realized that the universe had a beginning, and the more they study, you know, the more they study the universe, they see that our solar system and our planet is in such position in relation to all the other places that we are basically are able to watch and study. I mean, yes. we are basically the center, kind of like. It's a unique. Unique place, mm -hmm. yes. And in terms of fine tuning, it's a unique place, you know, for life to begin. And uh, as you say, evolutionists and atheists, they cannot explain that. And before, they would just say it came into being just, you know, by accident. Uh, but now they need a source, a creator, and they say aliens. Yes. So that is why he's talking about other civilizations. Yes. Okay, so, but then we have another problem, how aliens came into being. Well, you know? <laughs> so it doesn't resolve, but they started using these aliens, yes. you know, theory, uh, to try to, you know, avoid God. So, but aliens, the yeah, aliens, if they exist, they also matter. So how they came into being. Right, right, right. So uh, a lot of, yeah, but 
So the more we study, you know, uh, stars and galaxies and uh, the universe, the more we would see, uh, we would experience this awe, yes. right? So yes. Now on that same flight, one of the others quoted Genesis in the beginning was, you know, so they were not all of the same mind on that, that space flight. I'm just getting irritated with one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. So okay. spe speaking of awe, just real quick, sure. um, I have to, you know, some awe that I had last fall. Um, Gordon actually hosted an event at uh, Libertas where he had several of his friends with telescopes mounted outside, and one of them had his pointed towards Saturn. I'd never seen the rings of Saturn live before. Yeah. You could actually see the rings of Saturn in that telescope. That was amazing to me. I'd never, I'd never seen something like that see before. Pictures. I mean, I saw pictures of Saturn, but I'd never actually seen Saturn in the sky. It was just, yeah. Sounds like you need to have another event. I think it sounds for yeah. us. Yeah, we do. Yeah. 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 Sounds, sounds like, like you it. should come too. Yeah, We're coming. definitely. Because you, you could have an event here. At the, if we could have a trip event. Sure. But that's at night, right? Oh, oh, yes, yes. It's, it's at, at night, yes. And, and it was miraculous that we managed to get break in the clouds to look at anything. Yes, it was a cold night It was night freezing too. cold. Yes. <laughs> um, but we had a pretty good turnout of uh, students. Um, that was very encouraging. Yes. And we showed a, a CD called, um, oh, it's looking at the uniqueness of planet Earth and the hundreds of of miracles that had to take place for the earth to exist in its place for the seasons, for the tilt of the earth, the moon, for just... The, the odds were astronomical. Yeah, and and the, odds, the odds were ridiculously <laughs> impossible for the earth to exist, yeah. except in the divine creation. Mm -hmm. And yes. as you point out, the position of the earth in the Milky Way is such that there's a gap and you can, and you can, you can view the cosmos from here, very convenient. <coughs> that's right, that's right. So well, and if one little thing gets off, it's, it's like, it's, oh, everything it's gone. Everything's gone. Yeah. gone. Yeah. Just yeah. like that. I mean, that's what God, I mean, not only... Fine tuning, is, yes. Yeah, every day, every day, he's keeping everything in harmony. That's right. We don't even realize, I mean, we don't see it. We don't see his masterpiece. Always, always in the Amen. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I ask you, I got another. On the end of this uh, verse, what's the, uh, would it be the Greek word? Because it, it says, proclaims his handiwork. Handiwork kind of seems like it's a, I don't know, for me, maybe I'm wrong, it seems like it's, it's casual work. It's It was easy for him to do handiwork, right? I don't know if, if the Greek is... Yeah, I mean, uh, so it's Hebrew. That would be Hebrew. Uh, but I would, uh, I, I need to look that up. Yeah. Craft, craft would be a word I would apply to handiwork. Uh, uh, let us see what different translation. Work of his craft. Uh, 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 Kelly, are you using different translation? Your Bible is not ESV? Uh, ESV. ESV? No, uh, ESV? ESV. Uh, any non ESVs? Yeah, Russian over King James, what is King Handy James? Work. Huh? Handiwork. Handiwork. And what do, 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 does Russian say? Which verse? Uh, first. Nibisa. Uh, uh, 19. Про небеса и про славу Господню. Ну хорошо, небеса возвещают славу Господню. So this is, uh, Russians would translate the deeds of his hands. The deeds of his hands. The New Living Translation calls it craftsmanship. Well, the, mm -hmm. but if you had a show for the students, and you invite parents and grandparents to come along and come and look at their artwork, their things they've done, it would be their handiwork. Oh, did that? Wow. So, 
maybe there's hope for my grandson yet, you know, he's thinking about it, or whatever, you know how you see things and then you marvel at them. Um, it, it, it's more than just stuff he did. Handy work has a, an admiration to it, I think, doesn't it? That's right. If it's handy work. It's, That's right. It's, I, I, I can look it up uh, next time, you know. <laughs> but I know that for sure we are called his uh, masterpiece. Yes. Uh, yes. Christ created us. Yes. So we are created. We are created in Christ mm -hmm. for good works. So we are his ma ma masterpiece. So, which would be probably a parallel to the creation of the universe. Mm -hmm. So there's beauty. Okay. So Greeks they called it cosmos. And cosmos comes from cosmain, uh, beautify, something that is beautiful. And her, you have cosmetics from this uh, when you want to be beautiful, makeup, cosmetics. And orderliness. Orderliness. Cosmetology. Yes. That's right. I once sat next to a person at a wedding and, and I'm making blank conversation and she says she's at the University of Cosmetology. And I'm thinking, whoa. And, and I thought, hmm. now this is guilt for. She doesn't look that bright, excuse me, because she was, and that's not a very winsome thought. But the truth was, it was me that wasn't very bright, because I didn't know what cosmetology was. So, isn't it interesting how one betrays one's stupidity through your own judgmental thoughts of others? So anyway, when I got over my judgment, I continued the examination thinking, Cosmetology sounds really something pretty good. And then it's, well, it's hair styling. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it. Reproof, reproof. Thank you all. You know. <laughs> Cosmos. Well, the well, yeah. beauty. Well, yes. But you have Cosmetics. macro, you have, you have macrocosmos and then microcosmos, which is a human being. Yes. So she's working at the level of microcosmos at the level of human beings, making them beautiful. <laughs> it's interesting to have, to have a professor, educated man at the health. I love it. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, so oh, anything else that resonates with you? Yes. I just want to remind us that God created everything with his word. He said, and it happened. And here, David, he uses special language, like, not allegorical, but how to <coughs> allegorical in the terms. Allegorical language. And I like that we can see here God as a person, not just the uh, absolute energy and power. He talks with him, he thinks about him as a uh, person. Person. This is very important because many people think about God as just energy. Mm -hmm. It's this higher mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. It's not a person, like very, like Plato would think about God as an idea, right? So, not, not, not a person. And, and here, we see that God is a person, actually. Okay, other thoughts? Verse 9 struck me. Verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. I, did, I, don't, I don't know that I've ever seen the word fear and clean used in the same sentence. Mm -hmm or the word clean used to describe fear before. So mm -hmm. what do we mean by clean fear there? We had a conversation with Kirk a couple of days ago, uh, how much Bible or theology you need to know to teach people uh, about God and not to lead them to hell. And uh, we were just like, uh, by mistakes, right? And we were talking about that. And, one of, and we said, well, it's not that difficult. You need to have fear of the Lord. You need to understand that the Lord is holy. Uh, uh, once you understand that the Lord is holy, you would be clean or you, I, I mean, uh, clean of sin, right? So there would be no sin. You wouldn't celebrate sin. You wouldn't encourage sin. You wouldn't affirm sin. I think it's like very good, very good, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, something that uh, prevents you from leading people to hell, right? So this is a very good thing to know, so you know that God is 
holy, you have fear of the Lord, and you also know that God is good, and you know that Jesus dies for you, the works and the person of Christ, you know that Jesus loves, he is God, he dies on the cross, uh, your sins are forgiven, right? So uh, eternal life is possible. And I think there is, you know, this right balance between God is holy, and at the same time God is love, right? So he is a judge and lawgiver, and at the same time is, he is someone who dies for us on the cross and pays for our sins. And I think if you have that kind of in place, I think it's difficult to lead people to hell, right? So uh, you should always point people to Jesus, and you should remind people that God is holy. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, w what would be like ways to lead people to hell? Probably to encourage unholy stuff. Right and unrighteous and wicked. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's not clean. That's, that's... But the fear of the Lord is clean, right? So you understand. Yeah. No, this is, this is wrong. So we are not. I'm not going that way. I, I like how Tatiana uh, told me, yesterday. You mentioned a guy. Uh, I think that was Eastern Orthodox theologian, who would say, well, we can if we see dead corpse. Uh, so we see it, but we do not want to somehow interact with that, which is, you know, decomposing that, you know, body of an animal, say a deer or something. So we saw it and we want to leave. We don't want to interact with something that is kind of like, and the sin is the same way, right? So you don't want to dwell in sin. You don't want to go and interact with it, right? You saw it, and you say, no, <laughs> I don't want to be part of this. You want to, you want to leave as from something that is decomposing and smelling and is kind of like... It was death. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. You know, by seeing death, we don't want to yeah. actually be part of death, so we... Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it, the, the look is terrible, the smell is terrible, you don't bring your uh, lawn chair uh, to sit next to it with a cup of coffee and just enjoy it, right? So watch the flies. <laughs> watch the flies. You, you kind of want to distance yourself. Huh? The imagery that you provoke it just it sticks with me for so long. <laughs> so I will be thinking of that now. <laughs> but, but it's sin, right? Yeah. So. You, you don't want anything to do with that, right? <coughs> Yesterday I saw on the news that in New York they installed a statue which celebrates one of the uh, uh, late uh, uh, judges uh, of the Supreme Court uh, who was supporting abortion. And it's a lady demon. So it's a lady with horns and instead of, uh, and instead of arms she has tentacles. And this uh, demon, lady demon, uh, is a personification of abortion. Uh, and they installed it somewhere in uh, New York uh, to celebrate, what is it, Ginsburg, right? So, yeah, to celebrate in her honor. So this lady demon, you know, statue with horns and, you know, these tentacles. So she's golden, but she celebrates, it's, it's about abortions, to celebrate abortions. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so th th then you think, okay, so now we can understand what is fear of the Lord, right? So when you openly rebel against God and God's design, you know, and objective moral values, and you openly now promoting and, you know, satanic, demonic, unholy imagery, right? Uh, and and, and uh, so, yeah, so fear of the Lord protects us from that from that stuff. People who have fear of the Lord will never be doing that. The world and the devil would teach you that God providing say, commandments is trying to steal something from you when in reality he's just protecting you. It's like putting rail, uh, rails, you know, to protect you from falling into the abyss or so that the car wouldn't hit you, right? You install a, you install a fence so that your kids, you know, do not run, you know, uh, uh, and play on the road, you know. So it's, it's, it's protective, it's for our benefit. But many people think, oh, God is actually, is robbing us of something good. Mm -hmm. 
And this is what uh, uh, the serpent was saying uh, in, in the garden. So uh, God says, well, do not touch this, you know, fruit, fruit. And, and, and the serpent says, well, no, it's not true. He, God, actually knows that you will ha get something uh, that he doesn't want you to get, but it is good for you. So he was kind of challenging God, that God has no integrity, that God is lying and God is, you know, trying to take away something from you. It was the same kind of situation people uh, experience today when they think that God is trying, oh, okay, God says, well, uh, don't commit adultery. But people think, oh, he wants to take away from us these, all these pleasures, that we can have multiple sexual partners and just enjoy life, right? So he, he wants to take away from us that. So, and then later they say, okay, from 60s we had the pill, contraception, abortion, and a lot of sexual immorality, but it didn't make anybody happier, especially women. It just increased the level of anxiety and depression and everything, so it didn't actually make anybody happier. Not to mention all sexual transmitted disease and, you know, abortions and infertility and all other kind of problems, right? So even at the level of psychology, it was so damaging, and all the research says now it doesn't make people happy. Actually, sci scientific research shows that it's much more beneficial to have one partner and long-term relationship rather than having multiple short-term short relationship, right? So now psychologists say, well, whatever the Bible says, <laughs> it makes sense, right? So, but people kind of were wanted to be liberated from this. We want to be liberated, we want to do what we want to do. Yeah. So. Well, the devil will call it freedom. That's right. But we're okay with the tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of laws and statutes from the government, but we're not okay with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good point. Yes, yes, Ten Commandments is not good, but a lot of uh, 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 acts and policies from the government, uh, so that's so fine. Tax code has Tax code. 80,000 pages. 80,000 pages. <laughs> Some people say, oh, I don't know if I need to follow, God, if I want to follow God, you know, something bad happened in my life, I got this disease, or something. And I say, well, how can you, I mean, this world is uh, dangerous, and yes, there is sin and evil in this world. But you, there is no other way, uh, there is no way for you to survive by yourself. You need to cling to God. You need to cling to him and go through all this, you know, yes, yeah, strategy and difficulties and everything. You should go through, the, through your life clinging to God, no matter if you have a disease or you get into an accident or something, you cling to God no matter what, right? Because what is the other option? You think, oh, I will be by myself. You will never be by yourself. Very quickly, you will be, uh, you know, Satan will uh, get you under control, and then you would be under Satan's control. And not only you lost your, uh, you know, earthly life, you know, but you lost your eternal life, right? So, yeah. So that this is very good. Uh, look how he describes uh, uh, God's law, verse seven: "The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure." making wise the simple. This is us. We are the simple, <laughs> right? We need to be made wise. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And, 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 and then... Uh, they are sweeter than honey, they are more desirable, right, than gold, right? So this should be our attitude, right, to God's law and commandments and God's word. Let us pray about this. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for this time of reflection, meditation, and we ask you, Jesus, teach us to have this fear, fear of the Lord. Uh, teach us to love your commandments, to love your word, and... Uh, Help us, teach us to enjoy your creation 
and uh, to enjoy the heavens that declare your glory. Uh, in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.